So I wanted to have a little bit of fun this weekend just trying to use ChatGPT, MidJourney and some other tools just to try and put together a little bit of a kid's story. Um, I wanted to do a kid's story just because I thought it might be quite fun and you get quite a lot of creative license when it comes to imagery and, and what things look like. Also, I thought just doing a story in general might present a, a few design challenges that might be helpful to try and overcome uh, using some of this technology just to push it and see what its limitations are. So if you're interested in sticking around to see how that goes, then let's check out the video. So jumping over to ChatGPT then, I asked ChatGPT to create a story about a little boy and a little girl. It produced this story about two kids called Jack and Lily, who essentially go exploring into the woods and find a little bird who's been hurt. They then take the poor little bird to the doctors, fix him all up and bring him back. And the moral of the story is to, to kind of do unto others and be kind and, and, and the sense of good feeling that you get from that. So that's great. ChatGPT has given us a, a few characters to work with. We've got a bit of a theme for the story so we can jump over into mid journey and start trying to make it happen. So jumping into our character creation then, in mid journey, I wanted to start it off kind of simple. So I just punched in a quick prompt to create a character model for a cute little boy and a cute little girl. Ended up producing me a few decent examples, but most of them weren't body shots. I picked out the ones that are body shots, cut away the background and then fed them back into mid journey. If you don't know that you can do this, then in mid journey in the thread in discord, you can add in images. You click on the image and click copy URL, then you can post that back into your prompt. What that's going to do is mid journey is going to analyze that image and use that as part of its generation for how it creates the resulting image. The images I got were a slightly different style to each other. So I ended up running them through Photoshop, pulling them out the background, putting them back through in the way that I just explained and producing more character models. In the end, simple prompts work, just asking for a cute little girl and a cute little boy, full body character models along with those two images. It ended up producing a few characters that I was quite happy with. So I ended up selecting those as Jack and Lily and taking them over to Photoshop to do the first part of the processing. Before starting the real processing, we obviously needed a background scene. Um, so going by the first scene of the story where they talk about growing up in a little village, I wanted to kind of generate that and try and create something that with a similar aesthetic to Jack and Lily's character models. I started by trying to feed in the character models in a similar way that I used the character models before, but obviously this led to generating a lot of images that had faces in um, and, and bodies in. Obviously, because we were using the uh, character models to generate. In the end, again, I ended up getting away with just using some very basic prompts, just asking it for a cartoon style cinematic establishing shot um, of a city or a village. And one of the reasons for doing this was to try to create a similar aesthetic across the background. I figured that the AI would interpret the word cinematic as kind of a teal and orange kind of vibe uh, and stick with that. I've done a few iterations of this until I was happy with it, selected one and then moved it over to Photoshop. In Photoshop now then, and we're just playing around trying to fit the characters into the scene. One of the nice things that ended up happening when we used the first original character models to generate our final character models was that we ended up with quite a similar light direction on both of the characters, which is really handy. And also in some of these scenes, there is very strong contrast in light. So it was kind of easier to match the shadows again. This isn't perfect and I'm not shooting for like some perfect bit of work here. Really just exploring the art of the possible and where we can take it. So the second scene I generated was quite similar to the next one. I used the first image of the establishing shot and then asked for some woodland. It kind of ended up looking like it was just on the outskirts of the village. So I thought I'd use this as a kind of transitional scene. Um, one of the things I've learned when doing things like this with mid journey and with this kind of AI generation is to not get too caught up on the on the on the minor details and just kind of focus on the macro. Also, we can slightly adjust things and edit things in Photoshop. Another interesting note is obviously that now Photoshop has got all of the neural filters um, and different AI and machine learning tools. For example, Photoshop's neural filter upscaling and also using the content aware fill tool just to expand some of these images to fill the frame. One of the next stages then and one of the trickier things to do with mid journey was to try to create our character models but in slightly different character poses um, and with different facial expressions and different variations. Um, when you feed the images back into mid journey it will produce more character models but oftentimes there's quite significant variations and sometimes just small variations 
but always there will be some sort of variation to the character and it can be like little things like a different coloured shirt, buttons in different places and things like that. Um, so again, it's another one of those ones where at the moment you just kind of don't get too caught up on the minor details and just go for the general aesthetic of what you're trying to achieve. For the next scenes, it's generally just some more kind of wide establishing shots, just kind of general scenery. Um, it's not until we get to the part where we introduce the character of the bird that things get a little bit more tricky. Um, the way I tried to approach this is I just wanted to generate a, a, a nice image with the, the final frame that I wanted with the bird in and then to extract that bird and kind of maneuver it around the frame slightly, kind of in the way I did with the, the original character models. Um, and then you'll see how we kind of come back to that scene later on in the, in the story. Here we're just maximizing on the scene we've set up by punching in onto all the characters and giving them a little bit of dialogue just to kind of get through some of this narrative with uh, fewer words. So to draw a bit of a conclusion then about this technology and this workflow, I mean obviously there are a lot of limitations at the moment and this is just using mid-journey, but if how quick the progression has been so far is anything to go by then I can only imagine we're going to see this come on heaps and bounds. Some things I would like to see would be just some more built-in kind of prompt buttons just to save a little bit of time as we're kind of working through, especially with like prompt waiting. Also, it'd be great to have a little bit more control over the inputs. Having some sort of prompt waiting on images would be fantastic, especially when trying to create more consistent character models. It would also open up a lot of scope for more experimentation. In terms of AI in creative industries, I could see it's only going to get kind of deeper and deeper from here. There's a few other projects that are being worked on at the moment. I know there's one by Runway. They've actually just released a feature where you can actually upload images and teach the image generation um, certain characters or certain, certain things that you want it to know. Um, so really keen to have a look at that. I'll probably make another video with some of the guys at the office just kind of going through that at quite a deep level just to see what it can achieve. But I do feel like we're getting to a point now where this stuff could really start to bleed into so many different workflows. One of the things I'm really looking at and what this is a kind of really dry run at is just building storyboards for some of the videos we create in our business. Um, if you want to check out any more about that, that's Optic Matter. You can check us out at www.opticmatter.com. If you haven't tried Mid Journey yet and you want to check it out, I'll also chuck a little link in the description. Um, also a link for Optic Matter down there as well. For anything else I've spoken about in this video, I'll also leave some links down there as well. If you want any more content like this, feel free to subscribe and I'll speak to you soon.